Okay, welcome to a quick write, and it's exactly what it sounds like, a quick and a write. You're going to only be doing it for like 10 or 15 minutes, and you're going to apply it to your chosen book um, that you've been reading. You have one week down. Um, we are in the process of reading for week two, and it's a chance for you to write about your book. Let me know what's going on. You can apply skills. Um, last week, we've been working on setting and how it impacts the character. Remember Mrs. Manstey and the fact that she lived in... Uh, New York City and she lived on the third floor and she wasn't in good health. All of those things really impacted her as a character. And you're in the process right now of also reading two additional excerpts and figuring out how those particular settings impact those characters. One last thing you'll do and you'll see it in the list of reminders is the vocabulary activity that you just did. I'm going to ask you to apply it here and you're going to choose at least one vocabulary word to include in your response. Okay, what does this look like? For those of you that have had Mrs. Rosen or Mrs. Mason, this is going to look familiar. Uh, for those of you that haven't, um, I borrowed this idea from them. Here's the process. So again, you're only going to write for 10 to 15 minutes. This is not a long assignment. It's not homework. You're going to apply it to your chosen book, and we're going to practice a skill. Reminders that you want to keep in mind always that will never change no matter what the quick write prompt is. One, you're always going to include the title in your topic sentence, and my topic sentence is in red. When you get done, you're going to proofread for run-ons, spellings, punctuation. You're just going to go back and fine-tune, so like, if anything's underlined in red, check and make sure you've spelled it correctly, make sure you have end punctuation, make sure that you've capitalized the words at the beginning of the sentence. You're going to make sure that you use details about your uh, book, when you go back through, you should look and make sure that you don't have any I's, me's, we's. It's no first person you write in third person. And then include at least one vocabulary word. And I'll do this just so you remember. You want to... Oh, I can't. You want to underline your vocabulary words so that I see. Okay. Misty, what's this going to look like? Well, here's mine. And as you can tell, it's not overly long. So you're looking at a good detailed paragraph. Um, let's look at the pieces parts. I'm going to indent, because it's a paragraph, the name of my book is going to be italicized. What are these green things? At the time, meanwhile, I could also have things like in addition to, first, next. These are called transition words. I know you've probably had this before. Transition words help your ideas flow from one idea to the next without it sounding choppy. If you're not sure about a good list of transition words, you can always Google it. And it'll, uh, If you ask Google, give me an example of transition words, you'll probably get a big list that you could use. So I have my topic sentence, transition words, um, and then you'll see my details as I explain what the prompt was. And the prompt is I'm going to tell you my setting. And then I'm going to tell you how the setting impacts my main character, just like we did with Mrs. Manstey. So let me share with you the help, and hopefully this will give you an idea of what I'm looking for. The novel, The Help, takes place in the early years of the 1960s in Jackson, Mississippi. So there, my, my topic sentence, the name of the book, and a basic setting. I'm going to transition. At the time, Jackson was a wealthy city with pockets of impoverished areas scattered intermittently. Oh, there's my vocabulary word, and I underlined it. The main character, known as Skeeter, grew up on a cotton plantation where her affluent family employed black men and women to work in the fields and care for the home. Transition. Meanwhile, the civil rights movement was quickly gaining momentum across the North, but many Southerners were reluctant to dismiss their prejudiced beliefs. As a result, that's another transition word. The South was a hostile and dangerous place, and Skeeter was a product of her environment. Her Southern upbringing was ingrained with hateful and oppressive ideas. Even though she didn't necessarily accept those ideas, it wasn't until Skeeter moved to New York City before she grew intolerant of racism. So what I've basically tried to tell the reader is, I tell them my setting is in Jackson, Mississippi in the 1960s. That gives them an idea. And then I introduce them to my main character, which is Skeeter. Kind of a funny name, but that's her name. And then her setting is 
she lives in a wealthy city. Um, it says impoverished areas scattered intermittently. So in between these wealthy cities, we know that intermittently means like here, there. Um, it's not consistent. So they're kind of dispersed here and there. So I've, I've shown you that I can use a vocabulary word. And then I've told you, um, let's see a little bit more about her setting. Since she lives in a wealthy neighborhood, um, she grew up on a cotton plantation where her affluent family, affluent means rich, employed. So this rich family employs black men and women to work in the fields and care for the home so they have servants. I also tell you that in the meantime, well, I'm just, in the meantime, the civil rights movement is um, a movement where um, African Americans were working to gain the same rights that was happening in the 1960s. And so I go on to tell you that the civil rights movement was um, moving pretty quickly in the North. But Southerners, reluctant means kind of dragging your feet, not wanting to do something. So the people in the South, where Skeeter lives, don't want to let all people be equal. And I tell you that because I say they they have prejudiced beliefs. So then I tell you as a result, the South where Skeeter lives is dangerous and hostile and she kind of, a product or environment means she doesn't really know anything different and so she doesn't necessarily see things the way they are as bad because it's what she knows. And I go on to say her southern upbringing was ingrained with hateful and oppressive ideas. Um, not that she necessarily had those ideas, but it wasn't until she went to the north in New York where she saw that people had the same rights that she realized that it was wrong. And she becomes intolerant of racism. People are equal. And so there's a brief um, answer is the setting is in Mississippi. The setting kind of makes Skeeter okay with people not being treated equally. And it wasn't until she moved north that she realized this was wrong. And so that's the answer, but in giving you that answer, I've given you a topic sentence, transition words, and many, many details. And last but not least, I've included one of my vocabulary words to show you that I can use it. This is our first time. I would like you just to give it a try. So you will notice that on page two, I've asked for your name and period because I want you just to print this page off and turn it into the substitute. Um, this is your quick write one. Here's the same prompt. Here's your same reminders. And then you can type down here. I didn't give you lines. I just thought it would be easier without those. Let's give it a try. Let me hear about your book. Talk to me about the setting and how it's impacting your character. And give me your best shot at using one of your vocabulary words in the paragraph as well. Good luck. Have fun. Um, print only page two when you're done and please turn it in. Thanks.